Garvin Caverns and Village is a place where you can go back, you can see history, and you can see Mother Nature at its best. Squire Boone was an amazing fella. He was Daniel Boone's little brother. I hate to even bring that up because <laughs> Daniel Boone is the famous guy and everything was written down about him. But Squire did just as much. Um, he was a frontiersman. He was a gunsmith. He actually made Daniel's famous gun, the Tick Licker. He actually made that. He was also a Baptist minister, you name it. You, you just keep going. But when he and Daniel discovered this area in 1790, he had decided this is where he wanted to come back and live. And he came back, brought his family, they built the house and the grist mill. He knew he could make a profit with running the grist mill. And he was here until he passed away. Before Squire passed away, he told his sons that he wanted to be buried on this land because he felt it was holy ground. When he first came here back in the 1790s, the Indians weren't real crazy about the idea of white man coming in because in other areas, white men took over and took their land. Completely understand that. Um, but they kind of took off after him one day and chased him. And he used a small pit cave to hide. And he pulled some brush over the top of the story goes and the Indians just kept walking. So he swore that God had put that cave there to save his life. He built his own walnut coffin, which just amazes me. And then they put him in the walnut coffin and they buried him in this small pit cave that is right up on the hill. And he remained there until about the 1930s, we believe. And some grave robbing started to happen. And then in 1974, when we opened the public, our first two tour guides were like, we're gonna get into that cave and see if there's anything left. They finally found 27 bones in the skull, uh, and that is what is reburied inside the cave. We did a, um, a ceremony. His great, 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 great grandson came in, and he was at the service, and we have buried him back inside the cave with full respect because he was a wonderful, wonderful man, and we're thrilled to have our facility named after him. The cave has been known about for hundreds of years. The Indians used the mouth of our cave to store vegetables, fruits, and things like that. After a while, Squire and Daniel Boone discovered the cave in 1790, so it kind of dates back quite a ways. Then um, our first owner, William Conway, uh, he decided that he wanted to open a cave to the public. He was a caver, and he discovered this cave. He crawled through it, loved it. He said how beautiful it was. And that's when he started working on it. Two and a half years later, they opened the cave to the public with walkways and lighting. Uh, the first tours were done by lantern, but now we are all electrified and you just kind of walk through at your leisure. The cave tour itself is only about a third of a mile, so it's not a long cave tour, but it is beautiful. The first thing you'll be doing is you'll be meeting outside the cave cabin in front of our covered wagon. And the tour guide gives you an idea of what you're gonna be seeing. And then you go down a spiral staircase, 73 stairs. And then finally at the bottom of these stairs, you're going to open the door and you're finally going to get into the main cave. You're going to see a room we call Death Valley, which is the only really dry room that we have. A Rotunda Cathedral is my favorite. It's got a beautiful formation that we call the Rock of Ages in it. It's 33 feet tall. It's about a million years old. Also in that same room is a beautiful waterfall that falls from a stalactite in that room. There's another room there that just has hundreds and hundreds of stalactites and little soda straws that are hanging from the ledges. You continue on and then you kind of get to go in an area where you're nice and up close with columns and stalactites. Um, another area that we call McCarty's Folly, which is a flow stone, a big flow stone area. And then you finally get to walk over the water, which I, I think is just amazing. We have three streams in the cave, and two streams join each other, which you'll get to see. And then they go down a waterfall, and you're going to be walking right over that waterfall, right over those streams. And when you finally get to the back part of the cave, you'll get to see some of the largest rimstone dams in the United States. The cave tours year round, but the village will be Memorial Day through Labor Day. And we have Boone's Kitchen, which is our little sandwich shop. We make our own cookies, our own breads. We have a soap shop. We make our own lye soap. Oh gosh, we have Hannah Boone Candle Shop. 
um, we dip our own candles. Then we also have our main cabin. Now the main cabin is your souvenir -y, you know, cups and mugs and t-shirts. It's also where you get your cave tour tickets. And the main feature of the village is our grist mill. Squire actually built the mill back in the 1800s. And the mill itself, the foundation, is this foundation that he has done. But we had to put a new building on top of it because his mill burnt. Um, but we still grind corn and the demonstrator will let you know what's going on there and how it all works. Squarebone Caverns, just, it gets you back to nature and what Mother Nature can do all by herself. Your kids are going to learn pioneer history. Your kids are going to learn about the cave. And at the same time, you can have some fun too. Turn the cell phone off, turn work off, and just enjoy yourself for a day. Just turn it off.